Many people over these past few decades have embraced environmentalism as their religion. One of the familiar tropes of the resulting dogma is that our pre-industrial ancestors lived in harmony with nature, while we moderns live in conflict with it. This alleged conflict, we are warned, is destroying nature and in turn will destroy humanity. They give me hope where hope seemed absent. They give me determination where determination was flagging. And they give me belief that for the first time in years, a belief that we really can meet these issues head on and turn around our catastrophic political and economic systems so that they serve us rather than destroy us. Of course, the threat that this religion's priests and votaries most incessantly herald is climate change caused by carbon emissions. Addicted, as the common accusation goes, to the inexpensive energy available from fossil fuels, we denizens of modernity sinfully acquire frivolous material goodies today at the expense of mass destruction, destitution, and death tomorrow. Our departure from our ancestors' practice of living in harmony with nature spells our doom. And so salvation requires our return to our ancestors' natural wisdom. Or so goes a popular environmentalist creed. As is true with so much of the environmentalist dogma, the allegation that we today do not live in harmony with nature is mistaken. Deeply so. The reality is that we human beings have never lived as harmoniously with non-human nature as we do today. To live harmoniously with nature is to understand and accept the non-sentient reality of natural forces. The greater this understanding and acceptance, the greater the harmony. Because we humans today know so much more than our ancestors did about physics, chemistry, forestry, meteorology, metallurgy, biology, epidemiology, and on and on with our estries, ologies, and urges, we live so much more harmoniously with nature than did our ancestors. Centuries ago, to be sure, people lived simply, if by simply is meant life generation after generation, occupied with unchanging dull routines, and consumption limited almost exclusively to those tiny numbers of goods and services that can be produced from scratch by a few dozen villagers. Such simplicity, alas, enables only subsistence. And human beings trapped in subsistence do not escape ignorance and superstition. Let's stop mistaking dull routines and the absence of complex patterns of production and consumption as evidence of lives lived in harmony with nature. It's a myth, we might say an urban myth, that pre-industrial peoples lived with nature harmoniously or more harmoniously than we today live with nature. Nature devastated our pre-industrial kin. Nature mercilessly plowed them relentlessly into early graves. Our ancestors' failure to produce much material wealth was a reflection not of their harmony with nature, but of their deep ignorance of, and hence conflictual relationship with nature. To dance to imaginary rain gods or to chant for a child dying of bacterial infection is not to live harmoniously with nature. It is to live with nature most inharmoniously. Nature all along did its thing. For example, it occasionally failed to water crops and it often grew lethal bacteria within children's lungs while human beings who were as ignorant of nature as nature is of human beings chanted, danced, built totems, burned leaves and twigs sacrificed animals, all in fruitless efforts to solve the problems. In a contrast that could not be more stark, and as evidenced by our scientific knowledge of how to irrigate fields and how to produce and administer antibiotics, it is us today, in the modern globalized world, who live in much closer harmony with nature. We don't pray for miracles. We don't expect nature to change its logic simply because we arrogantly wish it to do so. We accept nature's logic and work with it. Natural forces are what they are. Praying for miracles is fruitless. These forces will do what they do. Only people who understand natural forces and how to counteract or reinforce or sustain or alter them with other natural forces can be truly said to live harmoniously with nature. It is science, rational thought, 
wise skepticism, and critical inquiry that enables us humans to live in ever greater harmony with nature. There is, however, one part of nature with which we today do live in a great deal of conflict, namely the nature of modern society. A central feature of this society is each individual's dependence on the knowledge and productive efforts of literally billions of strangers. Every moment of every day, every one of us in the modern world enjoys some good service or experience that is made possible only because countless strangers perform a complex series of astonishingly well-coordinated actions that have among their final results the goods, services, and experiences that are commonplace in modern life. From the alarm on your smartphone that awakens you in the morning, through the coffee and croissant that you enjoy for breakfast, and the computer or other power tools that you use to work, to the hard shingled roof over your bedroom and the soft machine woven sheets on which you fall asleep at night, you consume, each and every day of your life, a steady stream of the fruits of the labors of billions of strangers. The unleashing and coordination of all this amazing productive effort is achieved only within free entrepreneurial markets. Prices, profits, and losses emerge when buyers are largely free to spend their money as they choose on goods and services offered by entrepreneurs who are largely free to enter and leave different lines of production. These prices, profits, and losses daily guide these economic processes. The result is our fabulously prosperous modern world. And while this unfathomably complex series of coordinated actions of billions of individuals from around the world isn't without occasional glitches, testimony to the fact that it works smoothly and reliably is your own massive material prosperity combined with your obliviousness to the nature of the market order that makes your prosperity possible. Such obliviousness unfortunately leaves the globe-spanning market order open to attack. Too many people take its fruits for granted or imagine that its operations are far simpler than they really are. Yes, so this is one of, of several very important ideas which are coming forward at the moment for really looking at how we can replace our whole political economy with a new system. Because it's very clear now, capitalism is broken. It is like a gun pointed at the heart of the planet. The results of this ignorance of the nature of a market economy can be cataclysmic. I believe that we would have had no lockdowns if more people understood the complexity of the market order and more fully appreciated the magnitude of the material prosperity that this order makes possible. These lockdowns and the deranged fears that fuel them indiscriminately demolish countless unseen nodes of commercial interactions gubernatorial dictates obliterate business plans. Mayoral commands destroy businesses overnight. Government lockdown orders and ongoing threats of such severely obstruct the ability of entrepreneurs to innovate and of suppliers to compete to meet the needs of consumers. Unwarranted media and political hysteria severs many of the cords that form the complex web of supply relationships that are necessary for putting bread on our tables and roofs over our heads. The market is no fragile flower. It can and does take a great deal of abuse without quitting on us. But nor is the market indestructible. By commanding people to steer clear of many commercial interactions, especially as these arbitrary commands morph from ones that we are promised to last only a few weeks into ones that now we're told might last for several more months, Governments around the world are annihilating the global economy. No widespread event in my lifetime comes close to the lockdowns as an instance in which we human beings have so ignorantly and arrogantly chosen to live not merely inharmoniously with nature, but in direct and hostile opposition to it. This disaster has grown beyond the choices that individuals make. This is now about our industries and our governments around the world taking decisive, large-scale action. The final price we pay for this folly will be astronomical.